Why does breathing happen? While it is commonly accepted that maintaining the correct concentration of oxygen is almost the sole reason for breathing, and of course without oxygen we would die, this aspect of breathing control is usually of minor importance on a minute-by-minute -minute basis. This is because we can easily obtain oxygen only using a tiny part of that found in the atmospheric air and breathing the rest out again and oxygen needs to drop by approximately one-third before it stimulates the automatic breathing pattern. On the other hand, if carbon dioxide pressure is allowed to become unstable, it will severely affect the pH of the blood. And if the narrow acid alkaline range is not maintained, then the person will die. To ensure that this does not happen, carbon dioxide only has to increase or decrease by the tiniest amount in order to dramatically alter the amount of air breathed in each minute. So really, it is the levels of carbon dioxide in our blood that control or stimulate breathing rates. As the cells in our body metabolize nutrients to produce energy, carbon dioxide and hydrogen ion levels in the body increase in the arterial blood. Chemoreceptors within the main arteries monitor the levels of carbon dioxide and hydrogen ions. When carbon dioxide and hydrogen ion levels in the blood get too high, they stimulate the breathing center in the brain called the medulla oblongata, which then initiates inhalation. Inhalation is achieved by the contraction of the intercostal muscles of the rib cage, which act to pull the rib cage upward and outward, hence increasing the volume of the thoracic cavity. The diaphragm also contracts to extend the cavity further downward. The volume of the thoracic cavity increases, creating an area of low air pressure inside the lungs, hence air is drawn into the lungs. As air is drawn into the lungs, stretch receptors in the alveoli are stimulated, which signal the medulla oblongata that the alveoli are full and exhalation begins. The medulla oblongata stops sending signals to the intercostal muscles of the rib cage and the diaphragm, and these muscles relax, which decreases the size of the thoracic cavity. A decrease in the size of the thoracic cavity causes the air pressure in the lungs to increase, which forces air out of the lungs, removing the excess carbon dioxide. The respiratory system relaxes until carbon dioxide levels again increase enough to stimulate the respiratory center of the brain to initiate inhalation.